jewels. <laughs> she must be worth a fortune. Didn't I tell you? Why, she must be worth 20000 at least. <laughs> Will you look at that little lady sparkle? Can I help you, my son? Sure, Padre. You can give us the statue. What? Santa Teresita? But she's our patron saint. Her image has never left the church since the day it was opened. I can't give her to you. She's not mine to give. Ooh, did I say 20,000? She must be worth 40,000. <laughs> the brutal attack on Father Antonio. A good padre had grown old serving our community. Through the years, his unselfish aid to those in need had endeared him to people of all faith. In a way, his job and mine were alike, but our methods had to be different because he upheld the law of God and I defended the law of man. I don't understand. I don't understand him at all. Smitty, thank goodness you're back. Maybe you can do something with him. Father Antonio? He regain consciousness? Yeah, but he won't tell me anything. I've been with him for the last hour trying to find out something. Well, didn't he see anything? Oh, he saw who did it all right. He'll admit that, but he won't tell me who. Or if there was more than one, nothing. Why not? Well, he claims it's going to lead to more violence. Says we've had enough of that already. You know, Smitty, that statue's worth a fortune. Gift from the King of Spain. Padre's the only one who can help us get the guys. And he won't help us unless we agree to his terms. His terms? Well, what are they? Ah, oh, they're out of the question. Smitty, you know him better than I do, though. Why don't you talk to him? I will. But whatever you do, don't agree to his terms. Tom. How are you, Padre? Oh, I am gaining strength fast. That's good. You're always comforting the sick and injured, but now who is there to visit you? You have, Tom. Well, that's true, but mine is not exactly a friendly call. Oh? Did you see the man who hit you? Yes, Tom. I could give you a very accurate description. Well, then, why didn't you tell that to George Romack? If I told you who robbed us, what would you do? Well, I'd go after him, of course with guns and bullets, more bloodshed, maybe even kill him. Well, sometimes there's no other way. I think there is, Tom. God's way, the way of faith and prayer. Now look, Padre, you and I have been friends for a long time. I know you're a man of peace, and I respect your motives. But sometimes a peaceful way isn't possible. You, you can't just face an outlaw's gun and pray your way to safety. Have you ever tried it, Tom? No. And I don't intend to. Then I'm afraid I can't help you. Well, what about the statue? The symbol of your church. Surely your parish wants it back. If it's God's will, we'll get it back. Padre, what I need here are some facts, not wishful thinking. Unless you talk, my hands are tied. I can't do anything. But I will, Tom, on one condition. What is that? That you promise me there will be no killing, no bloodshed of any kind. Tom, you must go unarmed.
Audrey, I can't promise you not to take a gun. When I go after an outlaw, sometimes it, well, it's his life or mine. Well, Tom, a gun is only a piece of metal. Would you put more faith in its protection than in God's? I'd feel a lot better if I had both on my side. I am sorry. While we're arguing, the criminal's getting further away. I don't go after him, he'll rob again, maybe even kill. I do go after him under your terms. Maybe signing my own death warrant. Oh, Tom, if I really believed that, I would never allow you to go. You see, I put my faith in God, not in bullets. All right, Padre. You win. I'll give you my word, but you'd better do a lot of praying. Here's the answer to the telegrams we sent. Two men fitting the description of the outlaws passed through Elwood around noon, heading south. South, huh? Now that figures. Small town since you lawmen. But Smitty, why'd you have to go and agree to his terms? No guns, nothing. The only way I could get him to talk, George. Then at least let me go with you, huh, Smitty? I can pack a gun. I didn't make no promises to the Padre. That's exactly why you can, Co. I gave you my word. Now, you honestly believe you can keep it? The padre does. Smitty, what chance you got against two dangerous outlaws armed to the teeth? Don't you worry, George. According to the Padre, I've got a mighty powerful partner on my side. <laughs> south of Denver is big and wide and empty as all get out. And the towns are few and far between. I was about ready to give up when I rode into Pecos Springs. It was the last town this side of the desert. Just a wide place in the road. But not too small to have a watchmaker and jeweler shop. The statue of St. Teresita was easily recognizable. It would be a dead giveaway. But before they could get rid of it, they'd have to have the jewels removed. For that, they'd need a professional jeweler. Anybody here? like you're the guest of honor. Of course, I reckon you didn't figure on attending this party. Or was it the soft-hearted Padre talked you into coming after us without no gun? Jeweler, huh? Yeah. We had to rough him up a bit. You see, he heard about the statue and he didn't want to touch it. So we was helping him to change his mind. At least you still got it. Yeah. <laughs> Until we get the jewels out of it. Well, we can't hang around here to do it. There's no telling how many others are following us. That's right. But this here's one that ain't gonna follow us no further. You know any prayers, Smith? You better say them now. It's funny. A friend of mine said the same thing a couple of days ago. <laughs> you know, that sounds like the positive. He figured he was gonna need some help, too. Maybe. Well, you're gonna need help, all right, but you ain't gonna get it. You know, the Padre ought to go along with what I'm about to do. Like it says in the good book, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Lasko, get it over with. Now, don't you go rushing me, Joe. You know how it is with me and lawmen. Why, well, we got ourselves a famous lawman here. We got to do this upright. <laughs> I 
think so. I guess I'm just hard-headed. How about you? Oh, I'm all right. Who are you? Police detectives in Denver. Turn you those two without a gun? Yeah. Look here, mister. I got a long-range rifle in the closet and all the bullets you need. That's a real tempting offer. Sorry, I can't take you up on it. desert in all my life. Do you reckon we'll ever get across to Alaska? You bet we will. Now, don't you go think about that old desert. Just think how it's gonna be when we cash in on this here statue, huh? <laughs> Women, money, high living. Hey, easy on that water. We've got a lot of hard traveling to do. We ain't gonna get very far on that without no water. Yeah, well, let's get moving. Ought to catch up to us. Relax, boy. You're safe as in your mother's arms. Come on. Hey. Hey. safe to light a fire. Anyone follow us might see it. <laughs> How many times I gotta tell you? Ain't nobody fool enough to follow us out here. Mm -hmm. Well, just the same. I'm gonna keep watch tonight. Teams are gone, too. I told you we was being followed. Now we ain't got nothing. No horses, no water. And they're just waiting out there to kill us. Get a hold of yourself, man. He ain't got us beat. Not yet. Not by a long shot. He? How do you know there ain't a whole army out there? Because if they was, they wouldn't have wasted time stampeding the horses that had taken us. That's who I think it is. He ain't probably even got a gun. Let's go! Your horses are gone, and I've got your water! 
You can't get across the rest of the desert without it. Might as well give up now. That you, Smith? It's me, Lasko. We, you slugged him. It's like he was charmed. How come he got the strength to follow us? I don't know. I just don't know. But I do know this. There's only one of him out there, and there's two of us, and we both got guns. The odds are still in our favor. What are we going to do? There's no telling where he is out there. We're going to wait till it's daylight. Hey, well, supposing he don't wait. Supposing he just takes off and leaves us without horses or water. He ain't going nowhere. Not while we still got the lady. He wants her more than he wants us. Oh, that statue is a Jonah. He brought us nothing but bad luck. More? You worse than a fretting woman. I never know that it gets so hot so fast. You see any sign of him yet? How long we gonna wait? Why don't we just go looking for him? Well, that's what he wants us to do. He what little protection we got. With him horsebacking and us afoot, he'd run us ragged all over that desert. We'd never get within gunshot of him. How long you think we'd last out in that sun? About two hours without water. He's gone. I know he's gone. Ah, he's still there. When he gets ready, he'll let us know where he is. And there's still two of us to his one. Uh, I gotta get out of the sun. You two come up here. Leave your guns down there. So you can ride in and pick them up while we climb the hill? Not a chance, Smith. You want us, you're going to have to take us. That's going to be kind of hard without a gun. All I have to do is wait. I've got the water. You can't hold out much longer. OK, he's right, Lasko. He can outlast us. He's tired of waiting, too. He'll show himself. And we'll get him. He may have the water, but we got the shade, and it's a lot hotter on him in the sun. We'll wait. I'm sick of waiting. I'm sick of waiting. Up there. What? 
just waiting for someone to come up and get it. Boy, 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 it's a trap. He's waiting to ambush us. Trap or no trap? I'm gonna get that water. Boy. Muller, don't be a fool! It's a trap! It's only going to take one bullet to kill him. Bert's not going to pull us. He won't let us come near him as long as we're carrying our gun belts. I ain't talking about the bullets in these. I'm talking about the bullet in this. You turn off that hill with those guns, and I'll ride out of here and leave you. Smith! You will! We'll trade our guns for some water. All right. Drop your gun belts right where you are. Now come down that hill slow. Keep your hands up. I beat your head and you still got strength enough to follow. I put a bullet in you, you don't die! You hit the lady, Lasko, not me. <laughs> I was sort of expecting a pat on the back from Father Antonio for a job well done. I should have known better. He wasn't a bit surprised to see the statue back where it belonged. He'd known all along that the men who took it didn't have a prayer of a chance.
dollars Luke and another ten when we get to Denver after you kill a girl I don't know killing a man is one thing but killing a woman is something else oh, now look I've known you a long time you haven't got that much conscience you haven't got that much money where are you going to get another ten thousand dollars now don't you worry about that pretty soon I'm gonna be worth two hundred thousand I'm offering you a very good price Luke why not tell the girl right here in Kansas City the police know you here in Denver they don't you've never been to Denver have you no chance of my getting caught, huh? No chance. I tell the police that a man with a beard and mustache tried to rob us. I try to fight him off and the girl gets shot accidentally. That sounds pretty good, all right. If nothing goes wrong, it won't. The stage arrives at night. Man and woman walk down a dark, deserted street. We can't lose. <laughs> Before my trunk comes, did he say? Oh, just a few days. Oh, my clothes are in it. Oh, I suppose it doesn't matter. I don't think I'll need them here. Quick, my wife's been shot. She's dead. Dead? He tried to rob us. I thought I could fight him off. Did you just get off that stage? Yes. My wife and I came all the way from England to see my mother. Then you must be Paul Landers. Your mother said you were coming. You recognize him, George? Nope. Isn't that a terrible thing? Them coming all the way from England to run into this? Ooh. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'll be all right now. Go 
something happened. So late, we thought you missed the stage, Mr. Landers. Where's my mother? She's in the living room. She just wouldn't go to bed. Insisted on waiting up for you. Paul? Paul, is that you? Nice of you to help him, Mr. Smith. Oh. Hello, Mother. Oh, I thought this day would never come. It's wonderful to see you too, Mother. It's been such a long time. Fourteen years. Madge? Madge, darling, where are you? Madge? Mother. Did, didn't you bring her, Paul? In your letter, you said... Mother, please sit down. Unfamiliar. Do you want it anywhere? I check with the Kansas City police. That seems to be where he's from. Oh, it's a beautiful necklace. It's worth plenty, I'll bet. Found this in the Monroe's hotel room. What's in it? Didn't look. How'd you find out where he was staying? Back over at the state station. Monroe came into town a couple of days ago. Said he had never been in Denver before. Asked Mac to recommend a hotel. Brand new hundred dollar bill. You see one of those? It's gotta be counterfeit. Man with that much money don't go around holding up people in the street. Looks all right to me. Issued by the Bank of Denver. Maybe Mr. Gallagher can give us a lead. this money was dispersed within the month. From here? From anywhere in Colorado Territory. We ship currency in exchange for gold to every bank in the area. Any way of finding out which bank it came from? Well, yes, but uh, it'll take a day or so. I'll leave it here with you. $4,700. All right, I'll give you a receipt for that, huh? There you are. You know, it's too bad Mr. Landers resisted the robbery. He could have afforded the loss, whatever it was. You know him? Only from what his mother told me. He married a very wealthy English girl. And Mrs. Landers herself is worth, well, at least a quarter of a million, which she's giving to him, lock, stock, and barrel. Given to him? Well, what's she gonna live on? Well, she's gonna live in England with him. I didn't think Landers wanna go back there now. All that money can't bring his wife back, can he? Thank you for bringing it, Mr. Smith. You're welcome, Mrs. Landers. I'm sure Paul will wish to thank you, too. Emma? He's upstairs, ma'am. I'll get him. This necklace, I sent it to Madge as a wedding present. I can recognize it by the pendant stone. It's a triangle-shaped ruby. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Gallagher tells me you're going over to England. That's why Paul and Madge came to take me. I... I can't help feeling it's my fault Madge is dead. That's no way to feel. It could have happened anywhere. The killer didn't live here. What else did you learn about him, Mr. Smith? Well, the, the Kansas City police sent us his record. He's been charged with everything in the book. I'm not surprised. I'll talk to you again before you leave town, Mrs. Landers. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Smith. Goodbye. Tell me, what else did you learn about this, uh, uh, what's his name? Monroe, Luke Monroe. Found a lot of money in his suitcase, issued by the Bank of Denver. Can't figure out where he got it. Oh, I should imagine that he stole it. Maybe. If he did, he didn't steal it here. Checked into that hotel and never left. <clears throat> Thank you for all your trouble, Mr. Smith.
fool. You stupid fool. They don't know anything. You should have changed the money before you gave it to Monroe. We've got to get out of here as soon as possible. I can wind everything up in four or five days. It's not the police that bother me, it's her. She's been asking me questions as though she were testing me. She won't catch on if you're careful. Last night she asked me why my voice was so different. I told her I'd had a bad cold. You leave her to me. Just do your part without any more mistakes. Nothing must go wrong now. Nothing will, Mrs. Hunter. See that it doesn't. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, Mr. Landers. Good day. Good day. Tom. You said you had some information for him. Yes, uh, Tom. You know, strangely enough, that money was dispersed right here in my bank. To whom? Well, I couldn't rightly say. Monroe didn't earn it, steal it, or win it, as far as we know. Well, however he got it, it came from right here. There's no way of pinning it down any closer than that. The best thing I can tell you is that we put it out within the month. I'm sorry if it doesn't help you any. Thanks, anyway. Mother, feeling better? Well, I would if you'd only sit and talk to me. We haven't had ten minutes together. Oh, we'll have plenty of time for that. On the long train ride east and the ocean voyage later. Mr. Gallagher gave me these papers to read and sign. Oh, let it wait. Sit down, Paul. Give me your hand, son. In all the excitement, you forgot about the necklace. Oh, no, I didn't. I knew you had it. It must be very valuable. Yes, it is. I suppose I shouldn't have let Madge wear it. Is it something her father gave her? Why, no. No, it's, it's the one you gave her as a wedding present. Oh, it couldn't be. The stone isn't the same. The one I sent her had a square-cut emerald as a pendant stone. You must have replaced it. Why, well, yes, yes, I, I did several years ago in London. Now, there's many things I have to do, Mother. We'll talk about it later. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Tell Emma I want her. Mrs. Hunter? Yes, ma'am? Oh, I... Uh... I want to give Mr. Smith a reward for returning the necklace. Will you bring him to me, please? Why didn't you send your son? Oh, he's not my son! He's not my son, and you know it! You know it! He's not my son! He's not my son! <laughs> Well, I don't know, but I'll try to find him for you. What's wrong? It's Mrs. Landers. She fell down the stairs. She's hurt very badly. I'm sorry, Mr. Landers. You might have saved her if you'd come sooner. She was beyond help. A skull fracture like that, nothing could have saved her. approve of her coming down those steps alone? She didn't call me like she usually did. <laughs> well, I'll make the burial arrangements. Yes, sir.
better if she died on our way back east. But we had no choice. Hey, Doc. You seemed a little mad at Mrs. Hunter. And letting that old lady come down those stairs by herself. It's plain neglect, that's all. Neglect? Last time, it only resulted in a few bruises. I warned Mrs. Hunter then. Strange she let it happen again. She's been anything but a good nurse lately. Wait a minute, Doc. What do you mean by that? I mean, is there some reason for it? Is there some ill feeling between them? Oh, I don't know. I suppose the fact that Mrs. Hunter is going to lose her job didn't help any. You, you mean she's not going to England with them? Well, that's what Mrs. Landers told me. I don't say it means anything. Come on. Maybe it didn't mean anything. Maybe what Doc had said about the housekeeper's neglect ought to be forgotten. Unless she had something to gain by Mrs. Landers' death. Mr. Gallagher gave me the answer to that one. Mrs. Hunter was down in the old lady's will for $20,000. And what's more, she knew about it. That was when I sent for Paul Landers. I'm sorry to have to send for you at a time like this, Mr. Landers. Now, this is Chief Richards. Howdy, Mr. Landers. I gathered it was quite important. Well, yes, it is. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Landers, I want you taking Mrs. Hunter back to England with you. Well, that was my mother's decision. Did you know Mrs. Hunter very well? Quite well. You've been away for 14 years, I believe. But I was still living at home in Philadelphia when my father hired her. Why do you ask, Mr. Smith? Did you know Mrs. Hunter was in your mother's will? Yes. For a substantial amount? Mm, $20,000, I believe. Just what are you getting at? Where were you when she fell down the steps? In my room. But surely you don't suspect... You didn't see her fall, so she could have been pushed. I heard the noise. I ran out. But Mrs. Hunter was not in sight. But the back stairs lead to the kitchen. Really, now? How could she be sure that my mother wouldn't still be alive to tell me all about it? It wouldn't mean a thing to some people. There was a chance of them losing $20,000. Lose? <laughs> well, you see, there was no risk of that. She was to travel with my mother to New York. I had promised her the money before we sailed. I guess that's one on me. Yes. Your deduction is senseless. I don't want this mentioned to Mrs. Hunter. It would hurt her terribly. She is a loyal, faithful woman. She loved my mother very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Landers, but in our business, we have to check every lead we can find. And Sometimes I'm afraid it does make us look foolish. Yes, of course. If there are no further questions. Well, it's uh, just one more thing that puzzled me a little bit. Why wasn't Mrs. Hunter there to meet you when you arrived the other night? Well, I, uh, I wasn't quite sure exactly when we'd arrive. I'd only been able to give my mother an approximate date. Mm, I see. That'll be all, Mr. Landis. Thanks for coming in. Good day. You had a good thing going there for you for a while, Smitty. Too bad it didn't work. I'm not so sure. You know, he lied about Mrs. Hunter. How's that? She knew they were coming in that night. The mother was waiting up for them. Now, Landers comes into a strange town at night with his wife. Gets off a stagecoach and walks down a dark, deserted street. Mrs. Hunter isn't there to meet them. Why? Well, it could have been an oversight, Smitty. Yeah, it could have been. On the other hand, maybe it wasn't. George, why don't you take a run over at the bank and see if Mrs. Hunter's drawn any large amounts of money lately? All right. And meet me at the stage office. I think Mac may be able to answer a few questions for you. Thank you. Oh, hi, Smitty. Mac, I want to ask you some questions. I want you to keep it confidential. Yeah? For how long? <laughs> My wife's after me every day, you know. That's about Mrs. Hunter. She bought a stage ticket to Kansas City lately. No. But she did go to Dodge City. Twice, as a matter of fact. Once about uh, two weeks ago, and before that about, oh, I'd say a couple, three months ago, if I remember rightly. 
Was she gone long enough to make Kansas City? No, not hardly. Just a few days. You talked to Landers the night he came in here? Yeah. He gave me a trunk receipt. Said it'd be along in a day or so. There it is. Came in this morning. You seem surprised no one was here to meet him? Well, he didn't seem to be. Just uh, picked up his bags and took off with his wife. You ask how to get to the house? Seem to know that. Three months ago, she took out $1,000. Two weeks ago, $5,000. Well, that ties in with the time she went to Dodge. That's halfway to Kansas City, anyway. Well, what's that supposed to mean? She could have met someone in Dodge. George, I think these two deaths are tied in together some way. Yeah, Smitty, I can see where Mrs. Hunter might have had the old lady killed. But I don't believe she'd have someone hired to kill that girl. Maybe she didn't do the hiring, just put up the money. Uh, the only one answer that makes any sense out of this whole business. Mac, I want to take a look in that trunk. Well, it ain't legal, you know. Well, I'll take the responsibility. Can you open it? I got a bunch of keys that ain't missed opening anything up to now. It's one of them English trunks. All you need is a key close to the real thing and seal snap. What do you expect to find in here, buddy? You could have some of these clothes made over for yourself. Hey. Oh. So that's what Paul Landers looked like. We'd better get rid of that. No, oh, no, relax. The police believe me. They didn't they be here asking a million questions? of myself to put in there. Make me look real good. You know, if I'd had more time, I think she'd have married me. take over Paul's identity. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Then you had young Mrs. Landers killed, so she couldn't tell anyone about her husband's death, and at the same time removing the only other heir. You tried to make sure, Mrs. Hunter, that you got everything. widow sailed for America, she'd sent her own son to New York to meet her and to lead her into a death trap in Denver. A greedy gamble on which the housekeeper staked her son's life, her own freedom, and a $20,000 legacy. And lost. 